week's episode of The Good Gram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Firstly, as per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, or last week's two episodes of the show, as the case may be. Uh, liked, commented, all that kind of stuff that, you know, that's very much appreciated. And I think I'm pretty much up to speed with uh, answering um, all your, your comments. So, yes, a big, big thank you uh, for that. Um, also, as per usual, any comments that uh, I make uh, on the show are purely my own and bear no relevance to my employer. Um, right, so this week's episode of the show, um, it seems to be a bit of a sort of a, a, a yearly uh, or an annual uh, episode of the show that I tend to do on Canadian whiskey and hence the appropriate t-shirt um, uh, which is obviously Canada, Canada's uh, uh, other big export um, aside from whiskey that is and possibly um, stupid comments that are made by your your Prime Minister oh, oh no not not going there on the politics um, and I'm not being controversial at all <laughs> um, anyway no let's back to the whiskey why 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 Canadian whiskey well I think there's essentially there's two reasons the first reason is my good friends at uh, two brewers um, are still sending me uh, samples are on a relatively regular basis which is really nice of them and uh, you know very much appreciated it's not obviously not cheap to send uh, you know fairly weighty sort of bottles from uh, all the way from Canada um, so yeah I think it would be rude not to um, uh, do review their, their, their spirits and I like them, so you know why not. The other reason for obviously looking at Canadian whiskey is innovation. Now, um, obviously, they don't have the sort of um, the uh, the weight of uh, an, a, the Scotch Whiskey Association on their backs with regards to innovation. So it does allow them the freedom to play around with things, and which they wouldn't necessarily be able to do if the distillery was in Scotland. And I'm guessing part of the reason why we don't see a lot of the Canadian whiskies in the UK is that the Scottish Whiskey Association would kick up an inordinate stink about certain things like, you know, hopped whiskey and all this kind of stuff. And, and probably can, the, the distilleries are probably thinking, well, what's the point? You know, we don't need the hassle. We can sell our product. Um, I mean, talking of um, uh, exporting, uh, I, I was reading the latest um, press release from Two Brewers and I believe that their, some of their, their, their bottlings will now be available in France. Um, so we're getting closer to the UK and I imagine they're being imported by La Maison de Whiskey in Paris and, and often it's the case you some of the stuff that's imported by them does kind of work its way across uh, across the channel to the UK so um, there's a possibility that people like Master of Malt or the Whiskey Exchange may well have two brewers on their website at uh, some stage, don't know exactly when but you know, keep an eye out for it if uh, if you live in the UK and want to want to try their stuff. Um, yeah, so the innovation is is obviously sort of quite or appears to be quite rife in Canada, and I think uh, all of these samples today are indicative of the innovation within the sort of like the Canadian uh, whiskey um, uh, industry and uh, certainly two brewers seem to be at the forefront of uh, of innovation certainly uh, i'm not the only one that thinks so but you know they, they seem to win uh, a number of rewards at uh, the canadian whiskey awards so uh, so uh, obviously other people seem to think that uh, uh, they're doing a, a brilliant job as well so anyway so like i said uh, Innovation, I think, is the key word that we're going to use today, and uh, I think uh, I have actually, I think, um, done episodes on the show on, on all of these distilleries before, uh, so I'm not going to go into great deal of detail about them. You can obviously uh, find that out through the links in the box below. Um, so I'm just going to introduce uh, today's lineup. Okay, so we're going to kick off with uh, two bottlings from Ironworks. I'd just like to say a big thank you to my good friend uh, Shane Leahy for uh, kindly of giving me the samples of these two. And this kind of like leads me to another point. You know, if you've got a whiskey that you want me to review that you'd like my opinions on, then feel free to send me a sample um I, I, you know you can you can contact me and i'll obviously give you an address to send the samples to and you know maybe i can put together a sort of like a, a an entire episode or fit them into another relevant episode so anyway big thank you to shane for uh, these samples this is we're going to kick off with a rum why not um 
This is release number four of the Ironworks Rum Boat Rum. Now, it's uh, a really intriguing bottling, it has to be said. So, um, it's first off, it's their rum. The, the spirit is aged for between two and five years, with a proportion uh, being um, matured on their floating warehouse uh, called Black Beauty. Wow. Um, and... Um, Twice a year, they basically bring the boat in. Uh, you shall have a fishy on the little dishy. Um, no, yeah, if you're as old as me, you'll get that that reference. Um, anyway, so so they bring the boat in uh, a couple of times a year and take the casks off and obviously replenish them. And um, so. Does it have any influence on 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 the rum itself? Well, we should obviously find out. But you know, even even so, uh, it's that's really cool, isn't it? I mean, you know, floating rum warehouse. I mean, wow, excellent, good stuff as, as far as I'm concerned. The second bottling uh, is their whiskey. Um, I, I, th I don't know if it's their first whiskey. I certainly have. have, have uh, tasted and reviewed their blue nose rum before but i think this is their first first bottling of whiskey now um interestingly enough this is made with both malted canadian barley and peated uk barley so that could be quite intriguing so a bit like um the amrit fusion in in essence uh which was pretty much the same thing although they used indian barley rather than canadian barley obviously um so this is aged for three years in 200 litre french oak casks don't know whether they're they're new french oak casks or whether they're refilled they're just french oak casks i would guess probably refill and it's bottled at 42 percent um i didn't mention the abv of the uh, the, the rum boat rum uh it's release number five by the way and uh, it's bottled at 43 percent then we're going to move on to the first of the two uh, two brewers bottlings. Uh, the first one is uh, number tw or release number twenty one classic, uh, bottled at forty three percent. So it's their uh, pretty much straightforward their their classic um, spirit, uh, unpeated and um, uh, American oak aged, I believe. Uh, next bottling we're looking at is uh, release number twenty three, which is in their special finishes. Uh, range now this is quite intriguing uh, it's a vatting of lightly peated uh, malt uh, which had been finished in uh, export casks and ex sherry casks so um, yeah, I, I like as you know I like my vattings I'm not I prefer vattings of uh, um, these kind of things as opposed to finishes because obviously with vattings you have a little bit more control over how much influence the previous casks have on your final product so both of those are bottled at 46 percent uh, then we're moving on to the JP Wizards Hopped Whiskey. So this is produced, this is a, a, a bigger organisation, so this is produced at uh, Hiram Walker and Sons Distillery. Uh, so this is intriguing, it's their blended whiskey which is dry hopped at the... Um, at uh, the end of its, uh, well, when it comes off the still and put into barrel. Um, so this is a, a process that's that's well used in the beer industry or in the, uh, uh, certainly for making IPAs. And so it combines two of my favourite drinks, beer and whiskey. Wow, well, uh, you know, all it needs now is a, sort of a good dose of chocolate malt and, well, I'll be in absolute heaven, you know. Beer, whiskey, chocolate. I mean, come on, I mean... Uh, the, the, the food of gods as they say um, so yeah this is really intriguing so it's dry hopped at, uh, uh, when it's put into barrel and it's aged in three different types of barrels so uh, it's aged in Canadian whiskey barrels um, uh, first fill uh, American bourbon uh, and brand new virgin oak cask so um, quite dark in colour and I haven't actually poured them in the glass yet, I'm not going to get very far I'm tasting them if I don't do that. Um, and um, the last bottling we'll be looking at is probably the daddy of uh, innovation in Canadian whisky. Certainly it's the first innovative Canadian whisky that I ever came across and it was obviously the first whisky that really got up the goat of the, uh, the Scotch Whisky Association so anything that does that is good on my opinion. Um, this is the Glen Breton Ice 10 year old bottled at 57.2 percent uh i tasted it several times over the years and as far as i'm aware it's wholly aged in ex-canadian ice wine casks so uh it will be uh, interesting to finish on that particular one so um 
that's this week's episode of the show. Uh, that's the lineup for it. Um, I bet pour some um, whiskey in the glass. Then. Right, okay, so uh, whiskey in glass, I can now taste it. Let's see what the, uh, the rum boat rum gives us then, shall we? Well, that's an interesting nose. Um, it's quite estuary. Uh, I'm certainly getting dried pineapple, apricot. It's got a sort of almost agricoly kind of edginess in the background. Not quite full on kind of funky um, uh, Martinique agricole character. Um, but there is an element to it. There's a sort of a little bit of an astringency. Um, there's some almost red fruit notes as well. I'm certainly getting maybe sort of strawberry possibly. Um, a little bit of um, granulated sugar. Um, now I should have checked. <laughs> Never did my homework, do I? Um, I was exactly the same when I was at school. Um, <laughs> as to what the rum is actually distilled from, I don't know whether it's uh, molasses or uh, some rums can be just distilled from, from actual sugar. Um, it's got it's got a high toned kind of what would appear to be a column still kind of character to it. Um, there's a little bit of smoke from the oak coming through. Um, I'm not getting a great deal of, of coastal notes of saltiness or anything like that. Um, so um, I don't know if it's the the, the spirit that's matured uh, on the, the floating uh, warehouses giving it that agricoly astringency. I, I think if I'd been uh, if I've been tasting this blind, then um, I uh, I don't think I would have picked up any any sort of oddity like that. To be honest with you, it certainly doesn't doesn't come across. Like, apart from it being a really nice, pleasant, high toned, agricoly, estuary kind of rum. Let's see what's past one. It's young, it's oily, it's slightly fainty. Um, again, it has that sort of agricoly kind of edginess to it, certainly on the mid palate. Reasonable length. Again, I'm getting that light strawberry, strawberry note. Um, a little bit of spice. Um, yeah, okay, there is a sort of, a sort of saltiness on the finish, um, which could well be from the sort of you know the, the coastal influence um i must admit um where is it that the distillery is in lumberg um so i'm guessing that the um uh, i i think uh, if i'm right in saying it saying that uh, this was quite an industrialized area i mean i think the distillery was built in an old ironworks wasn't it i think um so i'm guessing there's a probably a harbor close by um so I don't know how much sort of salt seawater that is. But there is an element of saltiness there. So, yeah, okay, maybe I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say that the maturing of the spirit on the floating um, warehouse does have an influence, which which is cool. Um, overall, I think it's 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 pleasant rum. Um, it's not hugely complex, uh, but it's intriguing. It's interesting. And, well, yeah, and it's got a cool story, so what more do you want? Okay, so let's move on to uh, the, uh, the the Heart Iron Whiskey. So it's a bottle of 42% and it's pretty heavily co coloured. I mean, I'm not saying that it's unnatural. I don't think it's unnatural. I well, I'm pretty certain it's not unnatural. Um, and um, so it would seem to sort of say to me that it's probably been aged in uh, virgin um, French oak casks, I would have thought, judging by the colour it's picked up in sort of three years. But anyway, let's see what the nose is going to give us. Oh yes, oh that's nice. Um, that's really spicy. It's kind of, it's sort of in a Mac Myra kind of area here. You know, it's got that lovely esteriness, pineapple, apricot, apple, 
bubblegummy fruit. It's yeah, and and again, it's that sort of like yeah, yeah. One person's bubblegum is another person's com confectionery. You know, um, I like that kind of bubblegummy kind of uh, character. It's kind of um, now some people might say it's a bit sort of like I say a bit confected, not a bit re unreal. Um, but you know, it kind of. I don't know, maybe it speaks to my childhood. Not that my childhood was spent drinking whiskey, I hasten to add. Um, yeah, the, the oak is, is, is there. It's quite intense. It's very noticeable. It's very nutty. Um, but it's not too overwhelming. I, I think the balance is just about there, you know. I think it could have quite easily tipped over into overly oak city, but... No, I'm I, I'm liking this. I mean, you know, this for three years of age, I, I'm impressed. Um, I'd love to see this with a little bit more age under its belt. Will it sort of continue to sort of evolve in an estuary manner? Will the oak kind of come through a bit more? Who knows? I mean, I think this is one of the, this is one of the wonderful things about whiskey. You never really know exactly how things are going to turn out. You can sort of, you know, obviously plan. Uh, your sort of like your your, your your distillation, your fermentation, etc., etc., uh, to do a, to go a certain way with the, the maturation of your spirit. But sometimes they just throw you a complete curveball, don't they? Um, but you know, I I like this nose. This is a nice nose. Let's see what the part's on. It's a bit more oak on the palate, but conversely, it does feel a bit leaner. Um, again, there's a hint of tropical character, of that sort of estuary, bubblegummy, white fruits, apricot, apple, banana. The oak is kind of a little bit tight on the finish. It doesn't have exactly a, a great length. It's a bit short. Um, but it's got a nice spiciness. The, the, the oak is kind of, is again, quite nutty. Um, I think overall the balance is really good. It's kind of work in progress. It's kind of like saying this is where the spirit is at at three years old. And, well, it's dangerously drinkable at three years of age. I can tell you that for a start. Um, and I just think this is going to be sort of interesting to ca to see how this evolves and whether they're going to play around with oak cast a la Mac Myra because certainly, you know, this could have um, a similar interaction with oak like Mac Myra, it's certainly sort of in the mould of Mac Myra. Um, and um, you know what? I like this. Right, okay, so let's move on to the first of the uh, two brewers. This is uh, the Yukon Single Malt Release number 21. Let's see what the nose goes. That's it. Kind of classic two brewers now. I mean, I've tasted you know quite a number of their, their releases and um, a little bit more estuary possibly than some of the, some. Um, again, melon, apricot, creamy oak, barley, a little bit of spice. Um, there's a lovely citrus note just running through. It's got a touch of lime, um, which just gives it that, that little little bit of freshness. Um, and stops it being sort of too estuary, too fruity, and and too too oaky. I mean, that, again, this is a sort of whiskey that really ticks all my boxes. Again, we are in a Mac Myra E kind of uh, kind of characteristic, um, and you know, I don't think they, I don't, I don't know whether whether they kind of set out. Uh, to produce a whiskey in a sim I assume you know, the, the, the plan was obviously to make uh, a, a kind of quite an estuary war etc etc early maturing spirit um, and you know like I said this is absolutely gorgeous it's lovely it's got a lovely depth to it it's appealing it's just just the sort of whiskey that I really want to drink at the end of the day you know it's not I'm not having to work hard at it. It's not got sort of edginess all over it. It's not sort of interesting uh, from a technical standpoint, kind of, but I really wouldn't want to have a second glass kind of thing. Um, it's one of those sort of whiskies that are so dangerous, they kind of slip down rather easily. Um, anyway, let's see what passes up.
Again, estuary, fruity, but it's got a lovely minerally kind of mid palate and an edginess there um, just to kind of balance up the sweet fruits, the white fruit, the apricot, the, um, the melon, the pear. Oh, it's got a gorgeous intensity, really long. Um, again, it's not particularly old, but it's just right for bottling. And this is, this is the whole point of whiskey. Um, Age statements are, at, at the end of the day, just an age. It just says that this has been in the cast for 10 years. doesn't necessarily mean that it's ready for bottling at any given particular time, you know. And it's, by not putting an age statement on it, they're not sort of, you know, holding themselves to sort of like, oh, don't want to buy that, it's only a five-year-old, you know. Forget it, you know. This is absolutely fantastic whiskey. It is gorgeous. And, you know, if it does manage to get across into the UK uh, by some way or other, um, do yourself a favour and buy a bottle. That's all I can say. Right, okay, so let's move on to the uh, release number 23. So this is the special finishes uh, bottling at 46% and so it's uh, ex-sherry and export casks or export finish again just gorgeously balanced um, you're getting the tropical estuary fruit uh, of the, the distillery character with a, a little bit of, of dried fruit there's a, a little bit of smoke a little bit of a porty black red fruits dried fruit I mean, again, it's just just superbly balanced, um, and and it's just the sort of whiskey that you know that I really want to drink. It's you know nothing is over overpowered. You're getting all the elements that each of the um, the casks will will provide, um, and you know it just it it's just you 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 smell you smell and taste something like this, and you think well. Why, why do you want to drink something that's just basically blanketed in port or sherry or whatever, you know? This is just, this is just so, so skillfully made um, and absolutely gorgeous, divine. Let's see what the parts are. stunning a little bit more noticeable peat on the palate in actual fact but again it's gentle delicate slightly earthy although there is a slight sort of phenolic element to the peat again dried fruit a little bit more sherry um uh, and and on the palate but i'm still beautifully balanced i'm still getting the estuary fruit character a little bit of of whiny red black fruit a little bit of of dusty tannin certainly on the finish um juicy gorgeous mouth filling stunning absolutely stunning what more can i say uh you know it, i i can see exactly why two brewers continually win uh most innovative distillery best canadian distillery best this that and the other because it's just damn good um and like i said you know if you do get the opportunity to purchase a bottle maybe you are fortunate enough to live in um the northern states of uh, of, uh, of america or in canada um then you lucky people you can get your hands on it um if you happen to live in france you may well happen to be be able to get your hands on it as well but like i said you know if if you love mac Myra, if you love that style of whiskey that like i do then you really need to get a bottle of that that's all i'm saying Right, okay, so let's move on to the JP Wizards Hopped uh, Whiskey. So when I was looking up the information on this on their website, um, I couldn't find anything out, anything about it at all. It just didn't exist. You know, they had their sort of the information about their current lineup and the historical bottlings, and it wasn't there. And I'm thinking, are they trying to disown this whiskey? Hmm, no, there you go. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see what those are like. That's an interesting nose. Um, 
it's got a kind of almost pot still kind of character. It's got that sort of grainy, um, well, what, what am I surprised with that? I mean, you know, sort of uh, Canadian whiskies often do come across with that sort of grainy kind of uh, fruit character. Um, it's got a I don't know, almost sherry character, which is like kind of bizarre. Dried fruits, um, cocoa powder. I'm not getting a huge amount of overt kind of um, young hop notes. It's not like, say, the um, the Jameson's uh, IPA cask, which really does kind of, you know, reek of, of, of IPA hops. It's subtle. It's got that sort of herbal, sort of yeah, slightly hoppy kind of character in the background. But it, it, like I said, it's kind of tricking your brain into thinking, hello, there's some sherry character here. There's that herbal kind of, ah, but it's not. It's obviously the the hops that are kind of playing these kind of tricks. Um, again, like I said, it has that sort of grain, whiskey, dried fruit kind of character. Um, a little bit of cocoa powder. I, I like that. It's intriguing. It's interesting. It's it's unique at, at the end of the day. That's what pass on. Quite herbal, again, sort of um, slightly juicy, sweetish kind of dried fruits kind of opening up. Again, it has that real herbal character, which, although obviously feels like it could be sherry orientated, we know it's not. It's obviously um, the hops that are giving it that kind of herbal character. Um, it's not hugely complex. Again, lovely aftertaste, definite cocoa powder aftertaste so um like i said you know it's ticking all the right boxes for me you know um whiskey sort of like a slight beery kind of no and some chocolate and it's like kind of whoa you know give me a bottle of this and let me hide away for an afternoon um yeah it's it's intriguing it's interesting it's obviously it's definitely canadian it has that that canadian kind of grain whiskey kind of thing happening um and you know it, like i said when when i first tasted this uh, it was for the the whiskey magazine in um february 2016 and um Obviously, I had absolutely no idea what the hell it was. I mean, all it had written on was Canadian blended 40% uh, ABV. Um, and so obviously I knew where it came from, but to me it, it was, I thought it had been sherry matured or at least had some sherry in it. But obviously, as we know, it hasn't. And uh, But either way, you know, whether Hiram Walker have disowned this, I have no idea. But, you know, if you can ever find yourself a bottle of it, it would be quite worthwhile. Right, okay, so let's move on to the last bottle of the day. This is, like I said, this is the daddy. This is the first whiskey that, uh, or Canadian whiskey that I ever encountered. Well, the first Canadian distillery, I should say, that I ever encountered. Um, and certainly, it certain to me, it's the kind of like the the the, the daddy of uh, innovative uh, Canadian spirits. So let's see when those goes. It's certainly got a whininess. There's that, you know, it's almost got a kind of cat pea Sauvignon kind of character, which is just like, uh, oh, straight off the bat. Um, it's got a sort of whiny honey, oily, intense, almost rye-like character. Um, spice, baked apple, ginger, orange conserve. Quite floral, really intense, really deep, um, really honeyed. I mean... Yeah, again, it's just unique. I mean, I don't think I've ever come across another nose quite like it, it has to be said. Um, and yeah, it's edgy. It's got some, you know, it's got character <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, it's got, a, I mean, although it's 10 years old, it does have that sort of slight sort of youthful edge. I'm certainly getting a, I wouldn't quite say a wartiness, but there's a sort of slight kind of almost like Weetabixie cereal kind of note there in the background. Um, 
but you know it's, it's a lovely nose it really is intriguing so pass on rich cereally whiny i'm getting that sort of late harvested honey kind of note coming up for, up first touch of licorice bit of tannin on the mid palate again quite barley a little short it's masked um there's a touch of coffee um i no, there's no water in my butt i forgot to put water in my butt so i'm just gonna have to run with this um yeah, the, the the oak and the sort of alcohol does does kind of like um, make it feel a little bit short, but it really adds that emphasizes that buzzy spikiness, uh, which is really nice, really intriguing. And um, overall, you know, it it is a really interesting whiskey. It's drinkable. Um, it's got character. Um, what more do you want? So let's sum the, today's episode of the show up. Well, like I said, um, Canada, innovation, they seem to go hand in hand. And I think sort of today's tasting has kind of, well, hopefully, if not proved that um, that theory, uh, certainly sort of like showcased again uh, that, you know, great whiskey is being made all over the planet at the end of the day. And, you know, great whiskey does not begin and end in Scotland. It's not the preserve of the Scottish to make great whiskey. Uh, like I said, it is being made everywhere. And um, I think as, as whiskey lovers and whiskey aficionados, that we should embrace the whiskey from all other parts of the world. And uh, yeah, big thank you to Shane for the samples from um, Ironworks. And uh, yeah, I love the rumbo rum. I mean, yeah, I love the, I love the, the quirkiness of it. I love the, 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 the you know, because at the end of the day, you know, as a, as a retailer, um, it's great to have a bit of a story to tell, you know, when, when somebody sort of asks, why should I buy this particular spirit? And you can say, well, it's because it tastes bloody good. Um, sometimes that's not enough. You have to sort of like sell the product. And so when you have a bit of a bit of a, a, a curious story attached to it, then then great. Um, as long as the product is good, then that's the main thing. And certainly I think the rum boat rum is really enjoyable. It's really, really good. Um, the heart iron. Well, it's obviously work in progress. It's young, obviously. It's three years old, but it shows real promise. And and there's a certain sort of stylistic link between Ironworks and uh, yeah, the, the Two Brewers. And certainly the Two Brewers Classic is just Two Brewers Classic. It is their classic unpeated spirit. It's estuary. It's McMyra-esque. Um, it's just just gorgeous at the end of the day um the special finishes um again it just shows that sort of you know how how good or you know how basically everything should be valid you know forget the finishing business if it, finishing is not an exact science it's too hit and miss vatting is where it's at you know take some stuff that's been aged in certain casks and make your recipe bring it together um and you get something as as gorgeous as that do i need to say anything more um the uh, jp wizard's hot uh whiskey well you know interesting really intriguing you know drinkable it's not horrible um and it's in, in innovative um and you know i'm i think it's this really good it seems to be that sort of like you know Hiram walker seem to have uh, uh, have kind of conveniently forgotten about this particular bottling it doesn't appear anywhere you know maybe they're ashamed of it i, I have no idea why they would be because it's really intriguing um and um like i said the uh, the final bottling the glen brett nice the daddy of in innovative uh, i almost can't say it i've had too much whiskey innovative uh, uh whiskey from canada uh it was pro probably the first it may well not have been the first but as far as i'm concerned uh, and certainly in um you know my my personal uh, history with uh, canadian whiskey it certainly was the first uh, innovative canadian whiskey that i came across and um yeah, it it it's it 
it's still damn good is all I can say. So, yeah, there you go. That's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I, I, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I hope you'll keep your comments coming and uh, your likes and your thumbs up and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, until next week. Um, don't know what I'll be doing next week, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be intriguing. It will be interesting. I mean, anyway, until then... Good dramming and good afternoon.